The Big Ten wants to expand further, and that may include Utah and TCU. This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake Toll from America's number one Big 12 podcast, Locked On Big 12. Thanks for making this your first listen every single day. Today, Utah and TCU to the Big Ten is a thing that's wanted. Also, Baylor is canceling its spring football game, and BYU is about to hire its head basketball coach. Here's who it's going to be. First, Utah and TCU to the Big Ten is not something that Utah and TCU fans are completely foreign to, by the way. Utah has been talking about the opportunity to expand or where expansion is going to go for a while. Even Kyle Whittingham, their head football coach, has said, who knows if we'll still be playing BYU. BYU in the Big 12 in a couple of years because expansion is such a crazy thing, almost insinuating that it's not over for Utah and their forever landing spot isn't the Big 12. You could say that he was trolling or trying to do the thing that a crazy Uncle Kyle does, which is very possible here, but it's still something that he noted. And for TCU, remember when the Big 12 fell apart, it was... Can we sneak into the Big Ten? Does the Pac-12 want TCU, which at the time seemed like a viable landing spot and now they are dead? That is the first thing to note here is that this might not be the craziest thing for those two fan bases to hear that they're being included in a list from USA Today of possible targets for future Big Ten expansion. Now, this list includes Notre Dame and Florida State and Clemson and Stanford, but shocking to see Utah, TCU, both in the running for the Big Ten in expansion and Maybe the 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 crux of this, you know, you read the USA Today article, you know, the TCU and Utah have thought about what it would be like to be in the Big Ten before. They've thought about this girl. They've seen the girl across the bar. They thought, they thought it would be like to take her on a date. The Big Ten is going to expand. The, the wish lists that are being built, it, it almost feels like a way too early power ranking of teams that could get into the conference. But the reason the Big Ten will want to expand further is not just because Florida State and Clemson are now on the market and looking for a new suitor. Instead, it squarely is on what the college football playoff committee is doing right now. They have added in this latest contract a clause that says in a few years, by 2029, we can actually go in, see who is in conferences because of realignment and reevaluate how much money your league makes from the college football playoff committee based on who you got in expansion. The reason that clause is in there is is two words, Brett and your Mark, the commissioner of the Big 12. He went in and said, look, if you're going to give us effectively half the money of the Big 10 of the SEC, at least make a look in clause that down the line when expansion is, you know, more figured out, not said and done, but more figured out, we can get more money. If the ACC implodes, then the Big 12 will likely strike and get a Louisville or a pit. We've had that conversation multiple times so that the Big 12 becomes more valuable. The Big Ten then said, wait a second, if the Big 12 is asking for a look-in clause, if they want us to reevaluate to make more money down the line, we're going to reevaluate everybody, us included. The SEC is likely seeing the same thing. And with those two conferences making the same amount of money from the college football playoff committee, I can guarantee you one wants to get ahead of the other. It's not like those two leagues want to exactly play nice. The goal is to make more money, to be the top conference, not just in wins and losses, but in specifically revenue and specifically in football revenue. So if the Big Ten is looking further to expand, is it with a Utah? Is it with a TCU? Now, the USA Today article has used some sort of metric from football scoop to quantify how valuable teams are. They say that Notre Dame is the sixth most valuable team in the country, for example, and that Florida State is just 19th with Clemson being 20th. That's lower than expected. For Utah, they say that the number 32 overall valuable team, 32, number 32 most valuable team in the country. That's what we're going to put up. Behind Pitt, who's at 28, by the way, and that TCU falls in at 35. That feels as though it would be on the lower end of what the Big Ten wants. It also feels a little bit lower than I would have put a Utah or even a TCU in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metro. But the odds then that TCU or Utah would say yes 
are high, right? You know, I mean, like if the Big Ten called your school tomorrow and said, hey, I know you're doing great in the Big 12. Do you want to come make exponentially more dollars in the Big Ten? We can have you replace Purdue or Northwestern. or We can have you play with Purdue and Northwestern. Maybe geographically, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's not a life raft. That is the princess of the seas. That is the cruise ship. If you get the call from a different company that says, hey, we're going to up your salary by a billion dollars, you're probably going to take it. How However, that's not going to happen. And the reason is the strength of the, of the Big 12. We are not in an era anymore where this conference is poachable. There is a consistency, a congruence amongst the teams that are in this league. When we start talking about rumors of who would go to the Big 10 or the SEC out of the Big 12, it's in essence nobody. Part of that is the branding. Part of that is the fact that Florida State and Clemson have taken all of the all of the attention and the valuation for a TCU or a Utah. Their brand, their, their prowess in college football is not enough to compete with the Florida state and Clemson. And that's okay. It's great for the big 12. And when you take what the big 12 is, these schools can compete for national championships at, to me, a more convenient level in the conference. You don't have to worry about Michigan. You don't have to worry with CCU hat has to worry. Had, didn't have to worry about Michigan in the college football playoff, by the way, uh, you don't have to worry about Ohio state or Penn state. I mean, the caliber of football at the very top of the big 10 is better in the big 12. There is a more even range of teams. We don't have any given year an Illinois, a Purdue, uh, uh, a Northwestern, a Wisconsin who hasn't been good in a little bit. We don't have those weird, bad teams just kind of float over. They got a whole division of them in the Big Ten. Here in the Big 12, you have the opportunity to beat very good, to boost your resume because everybody's around the same level. And the revenue coming from the conference is not just good now. I can assure you it's only going to get better. The reason the look-in clause is there is because when the ACC is gone, Brett Yormark is going to take their teams. I, for one, want to be a part of the ride when that happens, when the establishment of a third power conference happens. Now, you've likely seen from other channels, other shows in the last two weeks, the possibility of Clemson and Florida State coming to the Big 12. Don't discount it. I personally am going to discount it. I don't think it's possible. It's not going to happen. But if Dennis Dodd and CBS Sports are talking about the emergency scenario where Clemson and Florida State are in the Big 12, that ESPN could possibly foot that bill and create a third power conference and make money off of three major leagues, TV networks making money off of three major leagues in college football, that's fine by me. That's a fever dream. That's a that's a pipe dream. And I'm not sure that TCU and Utah are going to wait around to see that. What you do wait around to see is how revenue increases when the ACC is gone and the Big 12 is competing at the highest level. And you're competing at the highest level in Big 12 play if you're Utah, especially because I think Utah football is going to be good breath. And you could do that at a more consistent level in the Big 12 than you can the Big 10. We've seen year in and year out that random team gets to the Big 10 championship and gets blown slap out. In the Big 12, we don't have that. We have the consistency of chaos. It is madness every weekend. And to me, it gives you a better chance to say, look at the teams that we beat that were actually good teams. We didn't beat Purdue and then Northwestern and then Illinois. We beat really good. We beat Oklahoma State. We beat Kansas State. And then we beat Kansas, who is good now. That's why you stick out in the Big 12. Will TCU and Utah go to the Big 10? No, never. Ha. Huh. Put them on your wish list all you want. It's not happening. Um, here's this. Apparently, Baylor has canceled its spring football game. This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is where I go to make money. I like making money. You know that. If you've watched any of the shows, you know that. And FanDuel is the best place to say, I think the Texas Rangers are going to win this baseball game like they did last night. One to zero against the Detroit Tigers, and I won money. It's playoff time of the NBA, the NHL, and baseball's in full swing. Get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on anything. Slap shots, home runs, slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Today is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. I love Monopoly Go, and I have played this 
for a long time. So the fact they're a sponsor now, flipping rocks. I am a competitive person, and my competitive side comes out on Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. Over 150 million people have downloaded this thing. It's where you play not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities. And the best part is you can do it with your friends. I can charge the friends rent. I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. Get in the game. Join in with your friends. Download Monopoly Go free on the App Store or Google Play. We have all been here. We've all been competitive. Monopoly Go is the best way to show it off with your buds. Download Monopoly Go on the App Store or on Google Play. That is Monopoly Go. Baylor football has canceled its spring game. I look, I love oddity. I love when college football coaches or just coaches in the big 12 do stupid things. I enjoy talking about it. Remember that one time Dana Holgerson did the whole like, yeah, well, we're supposed to lose in the big 12. What do you expect us to do? We're Houston. But I had random press conference he had where he was like, well, we're behind the punch because it's our first year in the conference, which was super princessy and stupid. He got fired, by the way. Uh, Mark Pope making the kids take the Texas t-shirts, the horns down t-shirts off. And now Dave Aranda on the week of the spring game saying, you know what? I'm not having a spring game for a guy whose morale was already bad. um, This is not a move that I think is very cool. Good. You know, I know he doesn't care if I think it's cool or good. What is shocking to me is that in January, January 12th, Baylor releases a statement that says the spring game is happening on April 20th at noon. As an alumni, you know, all your buddies, you get together, you're like, oh, we're going to go. We're going to go watch the spring game. We can't wait. This is one of the great things of college. We watch, was it 80,000 will show up for Nebraska or Ohio State or all these power programs and cheer them on. And it's a display of how much fans love their school. It is a display of how good the school is at one certain athletic event or sport or whatever, because they do it for Midnight Madness and basketball or a, a, a scrimmage in baseball, green and gold at Baylor, I'm sure. And then... The week of Dave Aranda goes, uh, so, no, nah, I just think we're not going to have a spring game. And instead, they're going to have an open practice. The mm-hmm. thing that just already happens, they're just going to do it. They're like, hey, anybody that wants to come watch us do drills can. Won't be a seven on seven. Won't be an 11 on 11. They're not streaming it on ESPN Plus like everybody else in the country. They're not even doing a formatted game at all. You know, usually it's the fun thing of like, hey, defense gets a sack. It's a point. If you kick a field goal, it's four points. If the offense gets a a touchdown, we'll give you 10 points. If the defense gets a stop, we'll give you 11, right? That's the fun intricacies of, look, that guy looked great. That guy looked great in the spring game. Happens every year. Every year, every team wins a national championship in the spring game. The only team that won't win a national championship in its spring game this year is Baylor because they've just decided the week of, nah, not for us. What? Like, I I have said, you know, over the course of the last couple of years, Dave Arena is not really cut out to be a, a college football coach, a head college football coach, at least yet. He doesn't have the personality for it. And he's the guy's just boring. You rather watch paint dry. Listen to one of his press conferences. He just says some weird stuff this week. I think he talked about how Dr. Who or, or Dr. Strange or one of those guys from one of those things was, is kind of the way that football is viewed. And I just, wow, it blows my mind. Some of the things that he says. And then this week, he says, all you alumni that are planning to come, all this big event that helps university morale, cancel it, scrap it, and maybe even more salt in the wound. We're still going to be there. We're just going to practice. And there's a whole quarterback battle that's happening right now. They've got now, it should be decided, Daquan Finn was the MAC player of the year and could be a very good quarterback in the Big 12 next season. But he might not start, according to Dave Aranda and Jake Spavital, the new offensive coordinator, who you also expect to see. And Dave Aranda, the new defensive coordinator, who has fired multiple coordinators at this point. And I know I'm often cynical about the school that I went to as a Baylor alum. But can we just be objective for a second? No matter if you're a TCU fan, a Texas Tech fan, a BYU fan, a UCF fan, a Utah fan, or a Baylor fan, this is really stupid. You know, I get you could spin it around like, oh, well, he's all business. No, no one does this. It's not a thing. Nick Saban, Kirby Smart, the top coaches in college football are never like, you know what? Take this, fans. We're canceling the spring game. We need to focus more. We're business around these parts. Even guys who are big names that struggled, like Jimbo Fisher, they wouldn't take the opportunity away for fans to see the team, for fans to get excited about the team. You never, 
You never, as a general fan, go to the spring game and leave thinking, man, we're going to suck next year. We look real sloppy today. No, this is the greatest beef up, the greatest You know what writing there is in college sports. The thing you do against yourself where you cannot lose and Baylor still found a way to lose. I just want you, whoever you are, to put yourself in the situation, the shoes of a coach in college football who has to look his fan base in the online, in the internet, because it's not the eyes, and say, hey, uh, well, happy Sunday, everybody. I don't think this coming weekend we're going to do the spring game anymore. You want to do some drills, though. Bet you our guys will block real well against those pads. Bet your quarterbacks will throw will real well when there's not a defense or tossing some routes. Who's going to show up? Like Talk about just killing morale around a football team, morale around a program. If I'm a player, I think this is the stupidest thing ever. I, one of the things that I hated as, as, as an athlete when I was an athlete, like middle school even, is the coach that would come in and just you know, say something. And everybody looks around and is like, that was kind of corny. You know, the guy was your dreams of the spirits that keep you alive. And that one kid in the corner is like, yeah, coach, you tell him. And everybody else is like, what's this guy talking about? I'm sure that's how a lot of the Baylor players feel. Like this... There's no convincing us this is cool. Like uh, you just took away the spring game, the one thing that you could have going for you, and the the people who decide to do it have canceled it. What a joke, man! What a joke. Coming up, BYU's coaching search. I think it's done. I think it's done. Locked on Big Twelve, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. LinkedIn Talent LinkedIn Talent Solutions is where I go when I need to make a hire. Every semester, I bring on an intern to Locked On Big 12 to help run the Twitter. So any bad tweets were probably the intern, not me, right? When you're hiring for your small business, LinkedIn Jobs is the place to go. Business, LinkedIn isn't just a job board. It helps you hire professionals, even those who aren't actively searching for new jobs. 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're not looking in the right place. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. They make it easy for you. They're constantly finding new ways to make it easier. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college. Keep in mind that terms and conditions do apply. I do believe that BYU has found its new basketball coach and that that basketball coach comes from Utah and not just the state of Utah, which feels pretty obvious when we talk anything BYU coaching search, but Utah University and Chris or University of Utah. I should learn that soon. Chris Burgess, Utah assistant, former BYU assistant, has risen as maybe the top candidate for Tom Homo and company. And I... I like this hire a lot because of what I hear Matt Norlander and other major college football pundits say about Burgess. There is not a world where BYU goes out and gets that big name because they don't operate that way. In essence, BYU wouldn't go after a Nate Oates. BYU wouldn't say, hey, what if we could dip down and get a Sean Miller? That's just not how BYU does it. They usually go with somebody who fits the LDS brand, the LDS faith, which I think is admirable. And they win doing that. I I don't mind that they stick to that formula of bringing in a guy like Chris Burgess, who you probably hadn't heard of. Utah assistant, former BYU assistant, and Norlander says he's 98% that BYU's next coach will be Barrett Peary, Alex Jensen, Kevin Young, Quincy Lewis, Cody Fuger, or Chris Burgess. And that's the guy who, after the multiple tweets that you've probably seen coming out of him really wanting the job, is likely at the top. The only thing that I've dialed in on that seems to be consensus from BYU, not consensus, but consensus from part of BYU nation is that this is a guy who might leave if Utah comes open. But Jeff Hansen says Burgess is the best candidate for the BYU job. BYU's process is slow. It's who they are. It's the nature of BYU, but Burgess is the right man for the job. Players, families, AAU coaches, and a bunch of others really respect him as a coach and a human. He'd kill it. Sounds like Burgess is a great human, a guy who coached, under Mark Pope, who's been at BYU. And I don't know if I've seen too much pointing to 
him Burgess being a guy that would jump ship for Utah. We've seen coaches go back and forth from BYU and Utah and coaches who have ties to both schools. <laughs> Kyle Whittingham, who wants you to forget that, by the way. Jackson Payne saying sources close to the situation tell him that Utah assistant Chris Burgess is actively pursuing BYU's vacant head coaching job. Burgess is eager to return to the school where he spent three years as an assistant under Mark Pope. Now, he has not been a head coach. He has not led a team, not been a head coach at the Division One ranks or led a team in the transfer portal or NIL era. That is the part that I think is not good. That is where I say, ooh, ooh ah, huh. can you control the portal? But maybe the response to myself there is he understands players who are on mission. He understands the LDS faith, the church, the restraints that puts on you, The the and restraints might not even be the best word. This is a a commitment to a, a brand, a culture, to ethics that does cancel some things out. You, you are Your opportunities are limited for a faith. And that, to me, is admirable because it holds a different standard. It's not a restraint as much as it is holding a standard. In that, Burgess understands what it's like to be at BYU. Now, I would love for Bryce Drew to be the next BYU coach. I think Bryce Drew would come in and win. And we know the guy is a morally stand-up dude. He has won a ton of basketball games at Grand Canyon. He has spent time in the region. He has NCAA tournament pedigree. He is a very good basketball coach. Not being in the LDS faith should not disqualify him from that job. I'm saying that as someone who didn't go to BYU and probably doesn't have the, the credential to say that, but... I and now Tom Homo, who's hired coaches at BYU who aren't members of the church. That is something that I believe the athletic department would agree with that it, the coach doesn't have to be. And because Bryce Drew isn't, shouldn't disqualify him. And I think he would win a lot and right away. However, if the stipulation is you need someone who has deep ties to the university, deep ties to the faith, deep ties to recruiting in Utah, Chris Burgess is that guy. He steps in day one, brings energy, brings life. CBS writes, Burgess has the temperament and the credentials that fit the job, but he's yet to coach the D1 level. That said, it's highly probable he'd be in the Dave Rose mold. When the, when the name Dave Rose comes up, it's when you know the candidate's probably got a good shot. As a BYU lifer, if he got the gig, Peary will get a serious look. He was previously at Portland State, went 63 and 57 in four seasons. Um, those two guys... Peary and Burgess seem to be the ones that are right up there at the top. I think Jensen, you throw his name in there as well. The difference to me is Burgess doesn't have that weird. Yeah. And even Pope at Utah Valley. I just, it's BYU, man. They do this thing where they hire some guy who hasn't won a national championship. They hire some guy who doesn't have all these flowers, these roses in their college coaching career. And they win with them because of the culture fit. It's a very impressive thing. And it's a, it's a case study that I, I would love to dive deeper in that I'm sure most people don't understand about the, the university. So here, I think Bryce Drew is your fun option outside of the faith that would come in and win. Burgess is the right call. And I'm gonna, I'll say today, as of Tuesday, April 16th, I think Chris Burgess is the next head coach at BYU basketball. He comes in, brings continuity, immediately goes to those who are coming back from mission and says, I want you to play here. Make sure that he keeps intact the players that want to stay and, and keeps the BYU brand right where it is, which is in a really good spot in basketball. Chris Burgess, welcome to Provo. Back to Provo. Probably can just live in the same house that he's in right now. Uh, come back tomorrow. We'll talk more about that and more on BYU basketball and football and the Big 12 and the stuff that we talk about on this show. Maybe even some expansion on Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That's not how I tag out the show. This has been it. Always, what was that? This has been it. Always will be locked on. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Dose Grande.